Hello, welcome to another episode of Navigating Cancer. I'm Dr. Joey Bennett from the Robert Boisno Oncology Institute, and I am joined by my co-host, Wendy Hall, who is our licensed clinical social worker and cancer navigator. Hey, at we're glad RDOI. you showed up today. I, you know, I missed a few shows. She took over for me, was out of town a little bit, so uh, we finally hopefully now have it worked out to where we're both going to always be here, although I'll have to give you a break for a You'll few You'll have to give me a break, shows. yeah. Um, <laughs> what we want to talk about in today's show is cancer and exercise. Um, we tell our patients a lot of times that we want them to continue to be active and do the things that they've always done, and exercise is a very important part of that. So what I want to cover in today's show is the mechanism of why exercise can help sometimes prevent cancer, uh, evidence that exercise will increase your chance of surviving cancer, and we'll talk about a prescription for cancer patients and cancer survivors as to how much exercise they should be doing in any given time. Um, excessive, you know, what cancer is, cancer is an excessive uncontrolled proliferation of cells. These cells just keep growing, keep growing, and depending upon the type of cancer you have, you can have lots of different symptoms or problems. And there's also a variety of treatments. Those of you out there know that surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy are often used, and our goal is to cure this cancer or at least try to control the cancer as best we can. There are some mechanisms for cancer reduction with just exercise itself, and a lot of people don't realize the importance of exercise. And Wendy and I were talking before the show about how sometimes we'll have patients come in who used to be exercising, used to be playing golf, used to be doing things, and they kind of back off. But you were mentioning one of our existing patients now of how she's continued to play golf. Um, she told me this morning that she played El Diablo uh, yesterday. She said she didn't play well, but she still played El Diablo yesterday. And as she has gone through her treatment, she's... She has no fatigue, which is one thing that we're always concerned about. Yeah, I mean, she's just not complaining of the fatigue. So the ability to maintain your exercise level really does help a great deal when it comes to uh, this fatigue. Other things, though, that you see on this slide is that activity will actually lower your levels of the sex hormones, and I'm talking about estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. And we know that many different cancers, like breast cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer, and even testicular cancer, can be related to having higher hormone levels than normal. So by exercising, you can kind of keep these hormone levels down, lower your risk of developing these cancers, and if you've had the cancer and you've been treated, you can lower your risk of having this cancer come back as well. Another thing that exercise does is it lowers the amount of insulin production that you have in your body. Um, higher levels of circulating insulin are related to several different types of cancers. And the other thing about exercise is it decreases your levels of what are called IGF. These are inflammatory compounds in the body. And these inflammatory compounds have been associated with colon cancer, prostate, uh, breast, and lung cancer. So exercising here again can lower these, anti these inflammatory components. It can lower your insulin level. And these are all things that have been shown to give you a much better chance of surviving your cancer, being cured of your cancer, and even if you don't have cancer, gives you a better chance of maybe never even de developing the cancer. And I mean, that's one of the things that we want to work on. We don't want to just focus on treating cancers. If there's a way that we can help reduce the number of cancers, then we're making a huge impact there as well. Um, a little bit more about this, if you're overweight, if you've got a lot of adipose or fat tissue, it increases your risk of several different cancers. And those of you who have watched the show know that I've talked about this before. Uh, colon cancer, kidney cancer, esophagus, uh, uterine cancer, uh, thyroid cancer, and also breast cancer in women who have gone through menopause. All of these things are seen at an increased risk and an increased frequency in people who are overweight. Um, the other thing is that physical activity helps to make things move through your intestinal tract faster. And we know that the more regular you are from the standpoint of your bowel movements, the better off you are. And again, 
the activity tends to lower these inflammatory components in your body. So it's extremely important for all of us to exercise, and I don't do enough of it, I need to be doing more, but from a standpoint of our cancer patients, we really want them to remain active. Now, there may be a situation where we don't want you to exercise. If you um, have tumor growing in a bone and you're at a risk of a fracture, then you know we have to be very careful with you. But otherwise, we really want to try to encourage our patients to remain active, to try to maintain their daily lifestyle. I know this is something that you tend to talk with them about a lot is trying to re maintain some sense of normalcy uh, to their lives. That's true and uh, the exercise also is important to reduce depression and uh, keep you going, keep you focused on something positive and so it's, it's very important. And I mean, we, we really stress that with all of our patients. We stress that with the caregivers as well. Um, this next slide kind of gives you a, a, an idea of, uh, you know, running a red light doesn't count. You still need to get more exercise. <laughs> Just because you ran the red light, it doesn't mean that you really are doing as much activity <laughs> as you want to. Now, a lot of people will say, okay, where's the evidence that tells me that if I am more active, that I can lower my risk and increase my survival? Uh, there's more and more evidence coming out. Um, from the standpoint of breast cancer, we have found that the risk of an invasive breast cancer can be treat, decreased by anywhere from 50 to 50 percent among women who are physically active. And if you look at women specifically under the age of 40 who exercise four hours a week or more, they can cut their risk of breast cancer by 50 percent. And women who are older than that, who have gone through menopause, will have a lower incidence of breast cancer as well if they exercise. So clear-cut evidence that the exercise helps. The greatest risk reduction is found with exercise during your reproductive years. And so that's why it's very important if you're under 40, still having menstrual periods, really try to get four to five exercise uh, hours in per week. And one of the newer things that's been discovered from studies is that if you have an estrogen receptor negative cancer, which historically is thought of as a more aggressive type of cancer, if a patient is exercising, they will respond better than they would if they are not exercising. Um, women who have estrogen receptor positive cancers, we can't prove anything related to the exercise yet, but in these negative cancers, and some of you may have heard about triple negative cancers, exercise plays a, a critical role in how well you're gonna do with your treatment. Plus, let's lower the risk of ever having a cancer in the first place. So, mm -hmm. very critical that you try to maintain your lifestyle as much as you can and stay active. And when we come back, we'll talk about more data that supports exercise.